Time passes in the village of Yocho. The remainder of the soldiers move in, securing the area. Any last bit of the ban is driven away, and a perimeter is very quickly established. Yocho, once again, falls under the rule of the Anorians. Gregor now sits in the recently repurposed relief hut with a Dow the Digger who bears lemonade. He tends to the reclaimed hostages along with the bearded giant. Lemonade will make you all better. Life gives you lemons. You eat them because they're good for you. Dow offers a curt nod agreeing with Gregor, bringing a uh, clattering tray of lemonade around. Uh, the two have been making nervous rounds to civilians who apparently just want to get out of the heat. Uh, repeatedly, there are multiple glasses of lemonade sitting next to all of them. They are sufficiently well taken care of. Good, good, good. See? Dehydration and scurvy are the number one killers. Number one and two. <laughs> in this exact situation. Dow slams his axe down on the floor in agreement. He tears a gigantic hole through the weaved straw. See? If you're good, you can get a lime. Gregor takes a bite of a lime. Dow watches nervously as Gregor's face does not contort at all. It just stays. Gregor smiles. Outside you hear a, outside you hear a slight commotion. Maybe they want limes out there. Oh, I hope I have enough. Now, what I'm saying is I've done the math and it all doesn't add up. There's some funny accounting going on here with this morality thing. Okay, now, you need to understand, first of all, that what you're trying to compare is not something that can be mathematically represented. They're doing accounting out there. <laughs> Dow nods and continues to walk around. Where's Thog when you need him? Gregor swallows the rest of the lime. The man, just temporarily distracted from his incredibly bitter lemonade, sweats. <laughs> oh, yeah, gotta rehydrate there, buddy. There, there you go, yeah. Here, let me just freshen that up for you. Gregor <laughs> crushes a lemon in his hand, dribbles it into the glass. <sighs> Unable to break eye contact, the civilian nods silently. They call him the juicer. <laughs> <laughs> Still uh, uh, crunching those numbers out here? Uh, yes, your friend is rather incredibly difficult. I mean, it's just like, okay, you need to understand a few things. It's about, this isn't just about morality, it's about friendship. The most important thing in the entire world, according to Marcus. I'm so, all about that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, Gregor knows what's up. See, he knows exactly what's up. That's why all this is going down, you know? Gregor knows what's up. I know what's up. Oh, yeah, y yes, yes. Okay, of course. Well, you know, we were merely engaged in a discussion over how the battle went and, you know, what the current state of affairs is. It is wonderful that we retrieved the town, don't get me wrong. Sending a message to the ban was rather important. But at the same time, well, he seems to have a misunderstanding of the situation itself. You have a misunderstanding of everything that involves all these mathematics <laughs> that are in my mysterious notebook that no, I will not let you see. <laughs> Kier throws something over his shoulder. Uh, listen, we've all got notebooks full of opinions. <laughs> Why don't we each share what we're feeling? Gregor, can I see your notebook full of opinions sometimes? No. <laughs> oh. Well, you see, as it stands right now, yes, we've driven the band back. And yes, we have reclaimed the town. That is all well and good. Hey, friends, brought another civilian, Kirlos. Over, he kill, kill him, slips the man tucking him under his arm. Gonna put him inside with the rest. Oh, okay, oh, thank you. He throws the door, he opens the door and throws him in headlong. Yeah, we're gonna have to break out the grapefruits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's going on out here? We're, we're speaking about the morality of we're, all of this. Yep, going inside, see ya. From our diaries. <laughs> you need to understand that as these things go, it's, this isn't necessarily a definably good action. Pretty sure it is. No, it's not necessarily definably good. It was an important step, but it's... Why do you, why do you think it's good? Well, you know, I think... Greg, Greg, can you back me up on this one a little bit? Can you <laughs> maybe give I, me a little bit of backup? Did, he's like, he's staring me down. And did I don't you think... write anything in that notebook, Kier? He can't stare at both of us, Gregor. If <laughs> both of us are talking, then he can't lock one of Here. us down with his gaze. Now he can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what are your concerns, Horovan? No, right now this this boy is attempting to convince me that this is this is some sort of a, a good action, retaking Yocho. The whole uh, the Telvillian's tear situation will work out for the better because of it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, right? Like, 
Gregor's gonna Gregor's gonna use the flower big time in the city, and it's everything's gonna get a whole lot better. That's important. Uh, sure. That's uh, a possibility. The the whole flower thing that's kind of a symptom, you know. It's really the clash between the ban villagers. Flower thing might be off the table. Yes, well, it actually, it appears that your friend has a far more nuanced understanding of the situation. He stares at Kier. I just, mmm, okay. Not like, in, <laughs> not like in the way you're using the word nuanced. Generally, I like to break out that word, and Marcus likes to break out that word, and that's our word, so hands <laughs> off, okay, bud? <laughs> See, Kier, it is a good thing. We saved people. That's great. Things that are gonna happen next, well... Hopefully they'll lead to the greater good. I just okay. But there's gonna be problems. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But not I... the problems that we're solving, but new problems. But hopefully <laughs> better than the problems that we're stopping <laughs> by creating these problems. Kier repeatedly raises and lowers a finger as if to <laughs> respond to your words. Uh, nuance. <laughs> <laughs> he frowns. Well. Well, it appears as if you do have uh, an understanding of the situation. As it stands right now, what's been done here was an act of vengeance for b taking, the, taking the flower in the first place. As you said, it's a symptom that humans have no right to interfere with anything related to a spirit folk. And they took it as a sort of a defilement of Telvillian's will, you see. And they struck back at the local town to sort of get even. And that's really not cool. First of all, I'd like to point that out. That's not cool, but it's understandable. Horvin, you know about the ban. Yes. <laughs> I am uh, a student of... Horvin's eyes start nervously to the nearby uh, guards. Of learning. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the reason the ban were... Killing people and hurting people in the first place. Mm. And why uh, the city had to hire all these mercs. Do you mean specifically in the case of Iocho or overall? Overall, when we got here, there was always there was already conflict a brewing. Yes, well... What was that about? That no one took the flower. Yes, yes. No, this, is, uh, this has been an ongoing struggle for uh, quite a long period of time. Frankly, we get away with telling foreigners that the ban are a little more than bandits wandering around the woods, but this is an ongoing guerrilla war with them. As it stands, the ban are incredibly defensive of anything related to a god or a holy ground. Doesn't matter if that god is violent, takes advantage of human life, or otherwise. All spirit folk life is sacred, you understand. So, take for example an incident last summer. A creature of the sea was sinking trading vessels. Uh, I, along with a few of the agents of the Valor clan, slayed the beast. That served to only deepen the conflict. Though it was taking large amounts of human life, it was still considered sacred. Repeat that ad infinitum, and you've got roughly the conflict you have in front of you. I see. Yeah, so really, they're fine with killing people, but they value spirit folk more. Yes, it... That's not okay. What separates this incident from the others is it's the first time they seem to take a location for a prolonged period of time. They tend to strike and then vanish. It's odd. Yeah. Well, look on the bright side. When they're guerrilla warfaring, we can't fight back. We just let innocent people get hurt. There's nothing we can do. If we gather them together in an army like this, we can at least fight against them. Defend against them. Yeah, I, I, I kind of get what you're saying, but at the same time, like, I don't, I don't get this whole distinction between human and spirit folk life thing. Like, humans are more valuable or spirit folk are more valuable. I mean, like... No one's more valuable than anyone. Yeah, and You're the see, most valuable of them all, Kier. Thank you. Thank you, Gregor. Thank you for the buttering. Thank you for the buttering up. <laughs> <laughs> I was serious. No, you see, the way I understand it, I don't know. A long time ago, I, I, I really felt like I had to, I had to make friends. You see, I come from a place with, with, a lot of, with a lot of people who were not so big into the spirit folk, but also a family who was really big into them. And as a kid, I always kind of wanted to meet them. So I made, 
all sorts of wondrous and crazy contraptions that would attract their attention. Uh, and eventually when I met them, they weren't so nice. But I never stopped trying. The gap between human and spirit folk isn't as big as people do this place makes it out to be. They're jerks and they throw rocks, but like, Ash throws rocks too, and she's my bro. Yeah. So She throws you know, knives even. She throws knives even, and we're still bros. Yeah. Yeah, See? that's pretty, it's human, spirit folk, rocks, knives, you know. Anyone, no matter their race, can bully other people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, it's not that I fail to understand the perspective. I I myself have been closely related to the spirit folk my entire life. I consider them the citizens yes. of this country as well. But oh, I yeah, think, they'd be perfectly cool if they weren't slaughtering people. I think the conflict here is a little more, he stares at Kier, nuanced <laughs> <laughs> than... We're all the same. Let's just all get along. There's been a lot of blood spilled. <laughs> uh, oh, no way. Yeah, we're not all going to get along. <laughs> oh, like we're this. all going to get along. It's going to be fine. I'm going to build them jetpacks. They're going to love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, we need a stalemate. And then we can shake hands over not killing each other once we realize that we can kill each other. <laughs> From down the path comes a familiar figure. They wander across the treacherous brook. Zeke with a certain blonde-haired figure braced on his back. Wow. You guys look majestic with your hair flowing in the breeze like that. There's a <laughs> lot of hair per person over there. <laughs> All at the same time. Zelf Zelveta is extremely unconscious. Uh, was Zelveta sleeping somewhere? No, he was engaged in a life-or-death battle with the leader of the band. It looks like he chose life. Yes, of course. I stood in to save him with my... Sick-ass Katana techniques. Oh, that was nice of you. Thanks. Good. It'd kind of be bad if he went the uh, death by, route. Uh, by the way, he's incredibly fast and difficult to keep up with. Yes, I am incredibly quick on my feet. Oh, God, they're bleeding together. Oh, somebody get them Somebody get them apart. I can't I can't do this. Kier <laughs> stares at both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me just... Uh, hook. <laughs> wow, you're really light with all that blood missing. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Anybody got some extra? I could heal him if I had to. Yes, well, your friend your friend over there is quite brave and rather interesting. I would is there a place to sit down? I could really use some refreshment. I could I could <gasps> use the, some refreshment a little bit more, thank you very much. Island puts up her hand. Like I said, I just they're perfect for each other. Here stares at both of them. I can't Okay, they're both very calm. <laughs> uh, everybody follow me. There's enough citrus for us all. This will wake you right up. I'm, I stick a grapefruit in self at his mouth. <laughs> he begins to unconsciously choke on the grapefruit. All right. Okay, so there's a story here. There's got to be a story here, right? Story? We already story? heard the story. Fight, Blood story. Beat up. Yeah, but it's got to... It, I just want the... I want the... The oh. thing, cure, cure motions with this drawing hand. Come on, like, like come on, a little bit, a little bit more of that. <laughs> okay, describe come it on. <laughs> with adjectives. I fail to see exactly what you're getting at. Perhaps you wish to see my fantastic brushwork. Yeah, that, 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 whatever you called it before. I want to see more of that. How about a little bit more of that? Oh, I haven't seen this shit before. This will be good. <laughs> Zeke drawing. Ah! I'm going to watch really close this time. Kirker gets down on his hands and knees and stares. I've never demonstrated it in front of so many people, but yes, I suppose. He begins to draw incredibly quickly. Now, when I heard of the clan's wish to move to war with the ban, I figured it would be prudent to reach the ban first, to try to arrange something so that the loss of life was minimal on both sides. So I took off out of the uh, great labyrinthine city of Jinkala. Uh, Island speaks up. Yes, and he's incredibly difficult to keep up with. His land speed is absolutely absurd. Yes, it's part of my cardio workout. Bow ripping is incredibly important for your core. <laughs> <laughs>